Hi, my name is Dave and today we're going to look at several interesting 40mm telescopes. 40mm telescopes are gifted at looking at double stars. They're pretty good for lunar observation and planetary observation, not so bad, but especially for double stars they are wonderful because the airy disk in a 40mm telescope is large. That means the dot produced by the star itself. So if you have a bright enough pair of double stars, you can more easily see the color differences. And the colors are beautiful. People that like double stars enjoy observing the colors. This is a Unitron model 127, and this is certainly one of the earliest ones uh, you will ever see. I'm pretty sure this is probably the very first model introduced in the early 50s by Unitron. And the way I know that is several things. First of all, the mount is uh, very primitive. It has the, uh, this saddle type arrangement. So with the saddle arrangement, you have certain limitations. You can't balance the scope. And of course, it's a light scope anyway. But it's, uh, it's pretty limited, and it's got another major limitation you're about to hear about. Um, and it's got the typical Unitron kind of sliding focus thing. This is only a 40 millimeter scope. Look at how small that is. Okay, one of the main limitations about this scope is this, the azimuth control. In the altitude, you have lots of freedom. You lock it down and you have slow motion. It's beautiful, very nice. But in azimuth, you don't have any way to, to make a course adjustment. So you're kind of stuck with what you've got. If you want to make a course adjustment, suppose something is over there in the sky, you have to pick the whole telescope up turn it around and aim it over there. Now you do have a certain amount of flexibility here, actually pretty good, maybe 5, 10 degrees. But you have to be kind of close. Now, uh oh, let's see, the moon is over there, let's look at that. Now we're going to look over this. Look. This is a pain and they quickly changed this. Uh, there are not many of these around. I've never seen any other ones like this. <coughs> And they quickly changed this because this is a, boy, this is a nightmare for trying to use this at night, looking at several different things on the sky. It's just, it's a real, real chore, real pain. Well, here's a little finder on the uh, Unitron, the very primitive Unitron. Uh, you can see that this thing is fixed, so that's the way it is. What you see is what you get. And it's not really removable. And when I, um, when I got the scope, it didn't have this. So I had to replicate this. I replicated this and it's not a perfect replica, but it's not bad and I'm fairly proud of it. Okay, this little SPI is a 40 millimeter F800. So it's a long telescope, long, skinny, beautiful, elegant looking little thing. Um, and the F20 may be helpful, maybe not so much. You could almost make this objective with a singlet. I don't think it's a singlet lens, but I, I bet you would not have a bad telescope with a singlet. Yeah, I'm probably lying. It's probably not good enough. Anyway, uh, probably have to have an F30 or F50 40 millimeter. But, um, but anyway, it, it does have the sliding draw tube thing here. Cute little thing. Nice focuser. Oh, the SPI has two focuser knobs. Unlike the Unitron, who are cheap and only have one, I'm not sure. Uh, it has a detachable finder here. Cute little finder. Cute as can be. Detaches. I don't think it's quite as nifty as the uh, fold-out finder in the Unitron. At least the more recent Unitron. The older Unitrons had a fixed finder which made them a little bit, they occupy a little bit more space. Anyway, the SPI, uh, the optics on the SPI are just as good as the Unitron. Uh, no problem, it's almost identical images, uh, adjusting for the difference in uh, focal ratio. I was using Zeiss eyepieces with these tel telescopes last night and the images were uh, no, no apparent difference other than the slight difference in magnification because of the focal length. So it was uh, 
you know, the, the optics are superb in this telescope as well. Okay, the SPI here has a very interesting configuration up here. It's similar to a Unitron um, in that it's got both altitude and azimuth. And you've got here is your altitude and there's your lock. Little bit perhaps wimpier than Unitron. It still works all right. And here's your azimuth. And it does have a locking mechanism for azimuth. So you can go around like this. But notice how it's sort of independent. <laughs> so one way, one's going one way, the other's going the other way. Anyway, you lock it down. Lock it down and now you've got slow motion azimuth. Much better than the primitive early Unitron. Here's the mount on the uh, better developed Unitron. They quickly lost that other uh, lack of azimuth control. Now you've got an azimuth lock here. So you can lock it down in azimuth. And here's your altitude lock. So now you've got a lock down and you've got good slow motion both in azimuth and in altitude. And these mounts, this is, these mounts are, are just superb. Very easy to use, very friendly. A uh, nice little mount. In addition to the improvement with the mount, they also put this on, a, it's now got a, a cradle instead of the primitive saddle arrangement. With the cradle arrangement, you can uh, unlock it and put it in and out more easily. So that's easier. And probably more important than that is you can loosen this a little bit and slide it back and forth so you can balance the scope. So if you have a heavy eyepiece in there, uh, you can easily more, more easily balance it. Here's another refinement they made. I love these little things. This is the fold-up kind of a um, finder mount so that instead of having something fixed there, you now can fold this away, put it away for storage. Very compact, very nice. And it works just great. It's fine. My gratitude to Charlie B who loaned me this charming SPI and model 523 for purposes of this video. Thanks, Charlie. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at these classic 40 millimeter telescopes from the 50s. Thank you very much for watching.